There are 96 comparatively small communities involved with remote policing in the Northern Territory, which are separated by large distances and difficult geographic and climatic conditions. It involves working with communities with a wide range of cultural authority, governance and management structures. For community policing to be effective, people need non-traditional methods and skills. It requires a balance of traditional enforcement and engagement with the community. To achieve safer communities, police need to work closely with the people and the service providers available. I became an Aboriginal community police officer because I saw a gap in terms of cultural differences and how there is two laws. I see myself as an educator. I like helping my people and making my people safe. My name is Bettina. I am a strong person and I am an Aboriginal community police officer. Communities have strong views about the need for Indigenous and female representation in the anti police whether the role is an Aboriginal community police officer or liaison officer in their community. The most important thing is to have that type of representation and ACPOs have been seen as a valuable resource within the community. And our main focus is helping the community. So we got a good safe um, community with healthy people living, getting to kids to school so they can learn and get a good job, like myself, I got the ACPO role and I find it very interesting um, because um, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have um, education, good education, yeah. you know, and uh, very difficult um, situations sometimes but I have to overcome that because um, I know two cultures and I bring them together. Mm -hmm. So if there's um, incidences where there's um, people are angry and that's my role, I come in there and to work out two laws clashing. So I bring them together so we can have a peaceful resolution. You know, community is happy, police are happy. Everybody is safe. You know. The anti-commissioner of police, Jamie Chalker, and members of the anti-police recently travelled to Yarralin to meet Simon Campbell, the newest Aboriginal liaison officer in the community. Aboriginal liaison officers go between Indigenous communities and the state or territory police forces in order to establish and maintain positive relationships. Their duties include establishing good communication between police and local Indigenous communities, helping determine disputes involving police and Indigenous communities, advising and educating police officers on cross-cultural awareness, advising police on potential crime and disorder areas and suggest ways to stop crime and misbehaviour, improving community knowledge about policing services and law and order issues, and more. We also met with Damien Gaila, previously an Aboriginal liaison officer who completed the training to become an Aboriginal community police officer. When I met Damien, he sort of inspired me to uh, go up the next level because I was a Night Patrol, Community Night Patrol officer. So when he told me that it was, he started off ALO, so I sort of, well, I sort of thought of myself, there's a career path. He's um, every, you know, police officer, and that's where I want to be in the future. So, yeah, I just thought, well, there's an opportunity, so I'll take it. And um, what I want to do is trying to eliminate my mob that's not going into prisons, you know, and trying to work with them, um, with the stuff you know with the community and liaison and not just community members it's also working with the schools and um you know uh, vic daily officers and all our stakeholders as well and make our community understand what's uh what's law is right and what's law is wrong that's what i wanted to become a alo i just want to um start off with ALO, then probably another two or three years, then go up where Damien is now as an Aboriginal police officer, and then probably 
um, once I settle in with the with the um, original police officer, go up to be a constable. I wanted to um, try something different, and I wanted to help out my community because I seen my community going through, you know, going through life is so hard, and I want to put something back to my community. I'm learning from Damon as well. My name is Damien Koyula. Uh, obviously, work for the anti police and uh, yeah, I work as a general duties officer here at uh, Ireland Community. General duties uh, that's sort of uh, a variety of jobs, like uh, obviously, we deal with uh, the things that affect the community, like alcohol, uh, domestics, all sorts of problems. I started as an ALO or Aboriginal Liaison Officer at, uh, at a place called Gapawayak in Arnhem Land. And uh, yeah, so that was back in uh, 2015. As I got more involved into policing, uh, I'd realized that I had something like a, I had a share in helping my people out and uh, helping, and that's one of my passion is to sort of uh, assist people in any way. It is very, very important this in this day and age because uh, it sort of, when it comes from an Aboriginal perspective, uh, people would sort of understand what 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 you are talking about, and and also also for me as an Aboriginal man, I come from the same background. I grew up in a in an environment where there was alcohol involved and domestics as an ALO. I sort of, my job was to sort of liaise between the community and the police and also um, other stakeholders. Whereas with the police, it's all focused on uh, general duties. But we do uh, do um, community engagement as well. And the majority of the people that we work with are Aboriginal people. And they want, Aboriginal people want to deal with Aboriginal people and that sort of makes it easy for them to understand and it also makes it easy for the police to actually um, get to the point like where we want to sort of uh, where we want to go with you know whatever matter we're dealing with it's important uh, sort of to have the relationship between the police and the community because at the end of the day we sort of we are there to protect them and to serve them as well I believe there's a uh, the, um, the anti-police is recruiting and wants to recruit more indigenous uh, uh, workers either with the ILO or Aboriginal uh, community police officer. And I also see that uh, they are actually supporting uh, ACPOs to sort of transition into constables jobs. And uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd love to um, encourage young people out there who's probably graduating from year 12 or, or dropped out of maybe year 10 or year 11 and he wants to get a job, you know, um, there's a job with the police and, uh, th and there's a lot of help out there too. The road to becoming an Aboriginal community police officer is rewarding. It fulfills the need to support your community and make a difference by being a guiding figure for the people around you. The responsibility of being an ACPO has its benefits. I'm Whitney Rowe and I'm an Aboriginal Community Police Officer. Now that I am a Community Police Officer, I am going to work really hard with the culture and languages. I know there's a lot out there and it'll be a lot to take in. Everything's different, nothing is the same, but I will acknowledge and accept everything as I go. Being an Aboriginal police, uh, Community Police Officer uh, is a, not only just being a police officer, but learning the cultural ways in other communities, building a strong connection with others. With the community that I'm going to, Nullum Boys, uh, show respect to them and get respect and be a, a role model out there for the young youths and look at, uh, help them look at this as a pathway as an Aboriginal Community Police Officer. Aboriginal Community Police Officer Nathan Hazel. Yeah, I'd like to start by trying to help the community out. Uh, we need to get out in um, Alice Springs and meet all the elders and all that down there and try and get in contact with the community as I, it's going to be my first time down there. Um, so just trying to connect with the community, try and 
see if I can make a difference down there. Come join the police, it's got a lot of good um, benefits to it, um, not only the respect that comes with the uniform and stuff, but also just um, your, with your family members, so it's something I look um, that I've, growing up I've looked up to um, role models in my family, um, certain blokes and stuff who have stood out and done good things for their community and stuff so hopefully I can um, send the same message to younger people from my community and all, um, surrounding communities in the NT. So that's one of my main things. Just um, be a bit of a, a role model um, towards the community, um, definitely with um, mainly the school kids and stuff like that, um, teaching them about um, Obviously, yeah, the law and that sort of stuff, but even out and um, getting a, a good career and a good job and um, keeping the family safe and, um, yeah, basically being a good leader. The Recruit ACPO course is conducted at the Northern Territory Police Fire and Emergency Services College, situated at the Peter Macaulay Centre in Darwin. The induction training takes around 20 weeks to complete at the training college before completing 12 months on the job where they receive ongoing training and will continue to gain experience in the field under the guidance of senior ACPOs. To the whole squad, you join legends. You are walking in the footsteps of legends. There are many Aboriginal community police officers who have gone before you, and the fact that you're a squad 26 tells you that story. You have the opportunity before you to be a person who will make a difference. So my heartfelt congratulations to you. It's been an incredible achievement. To the family and friends that have gathered here today, thank you. You play an integral role, not only into where these people are today, but into their future. Stand by them, support them. Understand that some of the roles that they will undertake will be challenging, but they will get out of bed every day and for every shift for the purpose of serving and protecting. The police identification badge provides an officer with a formal identification as a police officer and grants the recipient the authority to perform the functions of their sworn office. For the graduating squad being presented with their badge today, recognises the dedication they have displayed to pass all the requirements of 24 weeks of recruit training and also signifies the commencement of their career as an operational Aboriginal community police officer. On graduation, recruit ACPOs will generally be posted to one of four major centres, Darwin, Alice Springs, Tennant Creek or Catherine, where they will study, meet with people and experience life in remote areas as a person of authority. While ideally, it would be better to have more Indigenous sworn officers, the Aboriginal Community Police Officer Program provides a more realistic and short-term measure to increase Indigenous participation. The aim is to transition from a liaison position to an ACPO and then to a full sworn police officer if the individual pursues that path.